You are tampering with forces you can't understand. We have major corporations sponsoring this event. The Purple Rain Fantasy Show is a proud member of the Full-Time Fantasy Podcast Network that includes Jim Day of FF Champs, Bob Lung of Big Guy Fantasy Sports and creator of the Consistency Magazine, Anthony Servino of FF Face Off and Gridiron Experts, Adam Ronis, Dr. Roto of SiriusXM, and many more great people and podcasts, so be sure to check them all out at FullTimeFantasy.com. If you haven't checked out the Full-Time Fantasy site yet, you can sign up for free. Check out all the contests available, including Beat the Expert Leagues. They've got $35 Starter Leagues, Free Mock Draft World Championship, Best Ball Championships, Online Championship Leagues, Dynasty World Championship, and the granddaddy of them all, the Fantasy Football World Championship in Las Vegas and online at playffwc.com. Full-Time Fantasy also has NFL and MLB Fantasy Rankings, Draft Rankings, Seasonal Rankings, Draft Kits, ADP Cheat Sheets, Expert Articles, and more throughout the entire season. You can also jump into forums. You can find leagues to jump into, teammates to join your crew, mock drafts, much, much more. Bookmark it. Check it out at FullTimeFantasy.com. What is up? Welcome to the Purple Rain Fantasy Show. I'm your host, Frank B. You can find me on Twitter at FantasyWireHQ or online at TheFantasyFootballWire.com. And you are listening to the home of the casual conversation, no scripts or hot takes, Fantasy Football Podcast. Thank you very much for downloading today's episode. I appreciate all of you giving it a listen. This is the Fantasy Wire League Series, Episode 3 of 4. If you missed any of the earlier episodes, please go back, give them a listen. On episode one, we talked about league improvements, tweaking your league, being a better commish, uh, getting everybody active. Episode two, we talked about auction drafts. If you're new to an auction draft, that's definitely an episode you're going to you're jump into and listen because I kind of break down the break, basics of it, um, breaking in a new league maybe to an auction draft if you've been doing snake drafts the whole time. Uh, just an overview of how it works and what to do in it. And then today, episode three, we're going to talk about some custom draft sheets, creating your own draft sheets that you can walk into your draft with and be prepared to get the players you want to get for your team this year. Do me a favor. Be sure to give it a retweet on Twitter or a share onto Facebook. I don't have Facebook. Exactly. I've been I've been Facebook free for over ten years. It feels really damn good. It's something I'm I can honestly honestly say I'm pretty proud of. Um, it's just I find Facebook super toxic, super argumentative, more so than Twitter. And speaking of that, it's it's the holiday week. I hope everybody's having a great summer so far. Coming off of June, June was very volatile on Twitter. Oh my God, the people. I mean. If I had a dollar for every person I've muted, um, I could probably just go all in and pay myself for doing fantasy stuff. But no, overall, I, Facebook's toxic. I don't like it. I think it's a garbage newspaper uh, that gets delivered to your house every day that you don't want to read. Um, I don't care about people's politics. I don't care about baby pics. I don't care what you ate. I don't care about your drunk escapade over the weekend at the bar being sloshed at three in the morning and seeing 2000 pics of you with you know your eyes rolled in your head i don't I, I don't care i like twitter a lot big fan of twitter been on it for a while um i just i enjoy it more because i can pick what i want to you know see and read through and most of the trolls i mean there's still trolls and there's still some garbage in there but it's nice just to be able to filter it out one you know one click and they're gone so other than that i hope we're being a lot nicer to each other for july get off to a good start football is going to be here before you know it 
I did jump into the Instagram game, and I don't know why. That's that's another platform I'm I'm totally not a fan of. It's mostly, in my opinion, um, like you know, Instagram chicks doing their glute workouts. You know, every single post is how they're working out their ass, and it's duck lips and ass shots, and I think it's just pretty stupid. The fantasy football that I've seen on there is pretty much garbage. I've seen a ton of just asinine stuff that really makes me laugh. But I created an account. I gave it a run. I'm probably going to cancel it shortly. I don't know how long I'm going to last because I already don't like it. It's just weird. But I figured I'd let you know. I don't even I don't even know what the hell my own Instagram thing is. I think I did it under Fantasy Football Wire or it's like fantasy underscore wire underscore hq maybe something like that i don't know whatever we'll see twitter's my thing i like twitter the most everything i do all the main content you can find on twitter or on the website the uh, fantasyfootballwire.com i keep that site uh pretty active during the season once football season's over I i take off i want some time away and do my own thing i do this for fun i'm into fantasy football hardcore I take it pretty serious, but I don't go overboard and I don't, you know, I'm just looking at it. I've always looked at it as more as fun hobby. It's my fun hobby. I enjoy it. Love playing it. Love conversating on Twitter with everybody about it when you can have good conversations and and go back and forth in a polite way. You know, that's always the best. And the fantasy football community on Twitter, I think, is personally the best. Politicians and government should take a lesson from what we do on the fantasy football community because overall 90% I think it's really good. There's always going to be trolls. There's always going to be morons that always people that want to pick fights and that's fine. But overall, man, I've been on it for a while and it's, it's always been positive and it's good. Everybody's real supportive. So everybody that I talk to on there and that I've gone back and forth with and that I follow and that follows me, I do appreciate all of you guys. You guys are class acts. Um, and I love, like I said, I always look forward to going back and forth with you guys during the season. So with that said, let's get into some custom draft sheet creation talk. So basically, you go out and you look at cheat sheets online. There's top 200s. There's, you know, top 50 quarterbacks, top 100 running backs. And I mean, you can go any platform you want, any website, there's there's a we're inundated with rankings and lists which is fine i love i like looking at them i like looking at other people's i like to see where people rank different players and whatnot and it's not a science and i think people that take it serious or want to fight with you on twitter because oh how would you rank so and so way down here are you an idiot or you they're over you know they're too hyped up that's way too high for this guy or Whatever the case, I mean, I don't. You don't have to take them serious. It's not the. It's not gospel. It ain't the law. Just look at it. If you don't like it, laugh and go. Oh, whatever. I, I. I don't agree with that. Or have a, you know, polite conversation. I don't think this guy's here because of this. If you want to use stats, whatever the case. But I, when I look at rankings, it's just for fun. It's it's a person's opinion, and it's how they value the players, not me. So think about that first when you look at somebody's list. Even if it's a if it's stupid to you, they put the time into it to rank, and that's what they believe. So with that, I mean, I, I look at everybody's lists and rankings, and some of them I agree with, some of them I laugh at. You guys probably laugh at mine sometimes. I put some odd ones out there. But fantasy football is a prediction kind of niche. So, I mean, you're going with your gut a lot of times or your brain or what you see or how you how you calculate football into your own world. And what you put out is your opinion. So, I mean, I've stood behind plenty of stuff and I'm wrong or I've I've stood behind some and I'm right. And I'm like, hey, I'm actually right on that. How, to, how did I see that one or ones that I've missed? And it's like, you're an idiot. Why would you think that? So it's just all in good fun. It doesn't have to be serious. But when you do the rankings, when I first started playing fantasy football, I would always rely on like media outlets and their rankings, mostly like ESPN or NFL network kind of stuff or even – reporters stuff I'd find online and I'd print one out I'd do my fantasy draft with that list in hand and it always worked good there's nothing wrong with it but in my own kind of experience as you play and as you evolve as a fantasy football player I kind of get into where I know these players I watch enough football I don't watch just my home team I watch everybody I watch every primetime game you know I'm inundated during the season so as long as you're familiar with most of the league and the players 
I think it will help you to make your own list and you evaluate the people and the players of where you see fit. So what I like to do, I just started making my own lists for my own leagues and I would work off of that. And through that, I kind of became a better player because I looked at things a different way. I learned how to just kind of evolve in the way I look at players and rank them and just different, uh, I don't know, categories or, or boundaries, things, stats that I like, things that I find important, things that I don't just find a balance and make my own stuff. So with that, I've been doing that for the past couple of years and it's, it's worked out good. Um, but I wanted to let you guys into what I came up with. And if you can use something like this for yourself, awesome. You can tweak it. it I mean, what I am going to roll out on this episode you can tweak it any way you want custom to you and make it work for you. But I just want to give you like a base of what I do and how I started doing it. So um, pretty much, I mean, you don't have to spend five plus hours prepping for your, you know, cheat sheet or what you're going to do in research just to get something good. I always start off, I guess if you want to start at the very, very bottom, let's start with the easiest. It's, it's the players who off the top of your head are your early favorites what about your hometown team? Nobody should know your hometown team better than you and even the rivals in the division because that's you're you're in that all day. I'm in Wisconsin, so it's NFC North 24-7 here. Of co- obviously, it's Packers, uh, but I grew up in Baltimore. All my family's in Baltimore. My head and my heart are always in Baltimore, 110%. So it's also the Ravens and the AFC North. So, I mean, those two divisions, I know the best. Packers, Ravens, I know like the back of my hand. So with those players, those are your your guys you should identify the most. You should know your hometown team like the back of your hand. You know who's a dud. You should know who's overhyped, underhyped, the sleeper, the rookie that should break out. Those are your gimmies. So start with them, you know, your studs, duds, risks, all of that. Next up, what you want to do is just build, you're going to build a custom tier ranking cheat sheet for yourself. And like I said, there's plenty of expert rankings out there. But what are your rankings? Would you rank Alvin Kamara over Christian McCaffrey? Whatever your opinion is, um, you're going to select the players that you feel have the best shots of a great season and put them in the order of your choice. So what I like to do is I, I go online, I just print out maybe one to three of my favorite fantasy writers, cheat sheets or rankings lists, and I try to find them with auction values if I can. Uh, So your AAV is your average auction value, meaning typically where they're going in the auction draft. It gives you a good idea. It fluctuates. It changes all off season. So it's something you kind of monitor up until, you know, mid, late August for preseason. But I take one of those sheets and I just give them a quick study just to get like a basic idea, uh, you know, who's going where. How much are they going for? AAV, average auction value, is is an average price, $50, $72. How much are they going for in the auction draft? And the ADP, average draft position, where are they going in the draft? So those are two things that I I put a little importance on. But I, like I said, it's the offseason and it changes. You know, Twitter hype can dictate huge changes, just like the stock market, up and down. You know, a player can just shoot up the ranks because a reporter put a clip of him catching a crazy pass in camp, and then all of a sudden it's the next big thing, and this guy's hype is off the meter. Don't fall for that kind of stuff. Trust me, it's it's a dime a dozen this time of the year. So I try to ignore that noise, but basically once I do the sheets, I got a couple of, you know, I have a couple from my favorite writers and outlets. I'm going to print them out. I'm going to look at them and just kind of see what averages are, where guys are at as a as a base. Um, I'm going to print them out, work on my custom cheat sheet. I'm going to take the players and I'm going to make my own kind of like top 200 list, putting them where I see their value and relative to my league, because everybody's leagues are kind of different too, as far as where your other league mates are ranking players. You know, you, you should have a vibe of your overall league of who they value the most, who they don't like, who they like. Everybody talks. So, I mean, you should kind of know who's who, or what they're looking at. But in this case, you can categorize it any way you want. You can mix up the positions. You can separate them. However you personally like looking at a chart or a cheat sheet, some people like a straight top 200 list with everybody. Some people like uh, positional categories. Some people like 
you know, only a top 50 per position. So whatever you like, use that as your base. And for me, I like tiers. I think tiers for me are the easiest way to rank players. Um, I like to do the position groupings broken into tiers, and then I'll kind of re-rank each group and players into my own ranking as I see fit once I set the, the sheet. So in my opinion, the tiers, they're going to place an overall value on the player in the group. So as an example, like my, my current Fantasy Pros rankings, I've got tier one running back rankings, and it's Barkley, Elliott, McCaffrey, Kamara. So for me, I, I'm not going to you know get locked in and split hairs on who should be 1.01, 1.02, and so on. it's just stupid. They're all tier one, in my opinion. They're all great. They're all solid, solid fantasy stud running backs. So in that tier, I'm going to just order them the way I like them. So I like Barkley better than Elliot. He's one. I like, El- you know what I mean? So you can just put them how you want. There's no use in getting locked in on one player. Just focus on the whole tier as a whole. That to me, I find that way easier and like I said, you're not going to waste a lot of time splitting hair or, or getting into pissing matches on Twitter for, you would have him one, 101? Are you kidding? 1.01? 1. No way. That's a, it's stupid. 1.02. So that stuff, it's just easier in my opinion and it's cleaner. So tier one uh, just simply represents those players that are the cream of the crop. They'd be locked into your running back one, even your running back two. Uh, the tier two represents like viable starters, maybe some sleepers. Tier three should represent, you know, some like additional starters, potential sleepers, uh, PPR flex favorites at most, you know, I'd I'd put like four to five tiers in there because after the third, the fourth and the fifth are basically a bet, you know, a best of the rest listing. So that's how I would label them. You can label them however you want, but making your sheet, you need to start with a base. So after you've printed out you know, your expert ones, how are you going to transfer all those players into your own? You got to get an Excel, uh, hop on Excel. The first thing I did was make an Excel spreadsheet. I imported all the players. Hopefully you can like copy and paste or import files. So you don't have to manually type every single damn player in there. Um, but then once I have that, that's when I go in and construct it with the columns and the groupings and the ranks it's it's easier than it sounds. You just got to jump in and do it. Uh, but just start with ex- like an Excel program is probably the easiest. It's easier to plug them all in there. And then that's how I'm talking about building your tiers. You can highlight them, space them, separate them, whatever you want to do. But once you do that, you're going to print it out. You're going to break out your highlighters and you're going to identify your targets, your sleepers, your studs and duds. You can use whatever color system works for you and just something easy to remember for draft day. So going back to the Excel, you plugged everything in your Excel spreadsheet. You've got your players in there. You should have, oh, I don't know, probably over 200 for sure. If you just wanted to do a top 200, you could leave it at that. But just make sure you've got all the players plugged in. You've got your columns made. Everybody's positionally where they need to be. You've got the order set to how you want. You've plugged in your tiers. You've you've broken those categories into tiers. You've got your players in, in each tier. And now you're going to roll through and you're just going to highlight them. So what I do is I take a blue highlighter. Uh, those are going to be my sleepers. Typically, they could be like tiers three to five. Um, most of your ones and your one and two tiers, you know who's who. There's really not too many guys that are going to break out out of nowhere from those tiers. Maybe it's guys that have a really good year, but nobody that's breaking out like, whoa. So with my tiers three to five, um, you should have your, your sheet printed. Look over through, look over your third through fifth tiers, identify one to two players in each of those tiers that you feel could be the sleepers for that season. So who, you know, look at who are the experts picking? Who do you personally like? Use your gut, use your own football knowledge And just put like two guys in that tier of who you think it it could be. Don't be afraid of hits and misses. There's just too much parody. There's too much unknown with the NFL. That's what makes it fun. But to quote the great Jim Mora, you think you know, but you don't know. And you never will. So 
jump in there. Don't afraid. Don't be afraid to be wrong. Just just highlight them. So you should have some blue sleepers highlighted. Your next section should be the green highlighter. The green highlighter represents the uh, the go for the you know like your your re- traffic red light. The green light is go. If I am on the clock in my draft and my green highlighted player is available, I'm taking him. Don't think, don't blink. He's getting picked no matter what. That's who I want. This category is one tiers one through three, and even even past three, you could still put greens in there. But I I typically reserve one player for a green highlight, and green is like my dream team, like my best. So so you're saying there's a chance um, if the draft fell perfectly into place, and you could grab every one of your selections from each tier position, who would you pick? So highlight that player for each roster spot. If that player is available, like I said, you grab him. That's your guy. Dream roster, you're done. That's it. You don't even have to think about it in the moment. If he's there, you're picking him. So real easy, cut and dry. Next section is your yellow highlighter. And my yellow highlighter, I do tiers one to three again. Um, mostly all of them too. These are just like my, if my green highlighted guy was gone, my lock, if he's gone, my yellow highlighter would be my next man up. So I don't. I know you're probably thinking, well, your sheet's a mess. You've got highlight all over the damn thing right now. You don't. You Trust me, you don't. You should have two highlighted sleepers, one highlighted green, and you've got room, say, two more, two more yellow highlights. That'll give you about five or so guys per tier, and you should have a little more than five in the tier in some cases. It, it all, Like I said, it all depends on how you have it set up, but your yellow highlighter is your backup. If, it, if it's your turn... You're on the clock, you're up to pick, and your green guy has already been picked. He's gone. Your yellow highlighter is your next guy up that you would pick behind him. So you're only going to you know, highlight your backup choices in these tiers as if your dream player was already selected. So you can still grab a player from that same tier. You don't have to move down just because he's gone. But it's kind of where your pick should be anyway. It, it keeps you on task and keeps you from forgetting or getting lost in the moment or getting stuck on splitting hairs between two guys. You could also select like handcuff players here, maybe in the later rounds. So highlight, you know, one to two players in the tiers as that are backup ones, startable twos, include your hand handcuff tandems as well. I like to incorporate the asterisks too. So I, I put the asterisks next to a guy that's maybe like an injury risk Sometimes I put an asterisk on a guy that's a deep sleeper, but no highlighters, just just the the asterisk alone. There's always going to be players for whatever reason that you can't figure out. So maybe the masses are split on how this player is going to perform this season. Or I try, I guess, an example. I don't know. Mike Williams for the Chargers. Everybody is either hit or miss on this guy. Nobody knows. There's people. You know, he's going to break out. He's going to be huge. He's going to have a monster season. Other guys are like, no way. He's going to suck. He's going to be the same as he always has been. I That's a player for me personally. I can't figure him the hell out. I don't know. Right now, I he's just a player I cannot make my mind up on. So with those kind of players, it's not a lot of them, but we all have a few. We just we just don't know. It's, it's too muddy. I like to call those my bottle picks. So those are guys I can't figure out. And on my cheat sheet, I'm just going to put a little beer emoji next to their name because when it's draft day and I'm on the clock, I'm going to let the bottle decide how I feel about them. If I want to burn a pick and take them early, I'm going to take them. If I'm going to let them slide and not pick them till late, I'm going to let them slide. They're, it's okay to have those kind of picks, man. They're just tough. There's a lot of guys, either their situation's not clear, maybe they switch teams, maybe they're fighting for a roster. It's just Weird stuff. I don't know. Whatever reason. Sometimes you just can't figure them all out. So are there any players that you refuse to pick? Maybe a few guys that are just too injury prone to draft or some that, that just burned you in the past. I know I've got a bunch of them. Uh, Hunter Henry's one for me. Man, it's hard for me to pick that guy because he's just burned me the past two seasons getting hurt. Uh, but we all have a few of them. I ca- I categorize them as my refusal picks. And I'll pretty much do like a straight line mark through on my cheat sheet for him because I'm I'm pretty much I'm not going to pick him no matter what. Jordan Reed, um, who's another one? God, there's a there's a few, but 
there's always a few that I'm just, I'm not going to pick them because I'm not wasting the pick like I do every single year. So those are kind of some miscellaneous uh, picks or marks you can do on your own cheat sheet. So to recap, let's just recap it quick here. I know it's a lot of, a lot of information, but blue highlighter sleepers, maybe two picks per tier, green highlighter, green light, go pick them. Don't think, don't blink, pick them. They're green one per tier, yellow highlighter, backup picks like your second choice, maybe some handcuffs, um, say two to two or so players per tier. And then your miscellaneous asterisks, injury prone guys, uh, your mark throughs for guys that are your refusal picks. And then a beer emoji for your bottle picks. So I'm sure most, most everybody's drinking at their draft. Just don't drink and draft. Uh, it, it makes it fun, but it makes it a little difficult too, because you just, it, it's a tough choice. You just can't stay on task after you had a few, but it's fun. That's what it's all about. So it's in the moment. It's fun. Everybody's got a little pop. So uh, the final step is pretty much just tying it all together. So look, I guess basically look over your specific team in the real NFL, your NFL division teams, off season moves. Think about like changes, upgrades, you know, additions or subtractions to the real life team that may affect other key positions on your fantasy team. Uh, but that'll give you a kind of like an overall trend to see where, where players should be ranked on your cheat sheet. There's a lot of different viewpoints and opinion you can use to build it the way you want, but always make adjustments. Keep that sheet open. I may, I try to make mine um, right about this time of the year, 4th of July weekend or so, because preseason is going to be coming around. Camps are going, things are kind of changing depth chart, things like that. Uh, new coaches are putting their, game plans in and offenses and defense. So things are always changing. My base sheet never stays the same. I'm always tweaking it, but have something made just as a base and that you can go back into your computer and re-rank players, move them around. And it's just strictly up to you. If you want to do it weekly, you can do it weekly. I do it kind of like once a month. I'll see how I feel after I got, I try to like get a lot of information through the month. I want to see what what's happened whose names have been in the headlines, things like that. And then um, August, I'll revise it and I'll leave it. And then right before my draft, maybe the week before my draft, I'll set it one last time and print it. And that's what I'm going to walk into my draft with is my final sheet. But listen, make adjustments, set your sheet for draft day. It's going to change a few times. That's totally okay, but just keep it minimal. Stick with your gut. If you go with your brain, you can stick with your brain, whatever works best for you. And yes, your cheat sheet is going to look, end up looking like Andy Reid's 20 by 20 Denny's play calling menu. But if you create it the right way, it should look like this. Your tier breakdowns with three to five highlighted players per tier. It doesn't have to be a rainbow colored Skittles cheat sheet of confusion. Just keep it simple. As long as you've got it abbreviated and labeled, it's going to work for you. When you're sitting on there at your draft on draft day and you got a couple pops in you, you're feeling pretty good, you're going to be able to BS a little bit and come back to your sheet and know right where you were because that's that's the toughest thing for me is leaving my, my sheet or my plan and coming back to it when it's my turn and going, oh shit, what was I going to do again? I had, I thought I was going to pick so-and-so or it just gets, it can get away from you quick. So this will be the final of uh, episode kind of part in this series about the cheat sheets. But our next episode is going to talk about tying it all in on draft day. So draft day is, is our goal. That's where we're getting to. So that'll wrap up episode three of the fantasy wire league series. We've got one more to go. So make sure you're following on Twitter at fantasy wire HQ or subscribing to the podcast on one or both of our main streams. We've got both of them pretty much on Spreaker and SoundCloud are the uh, the main platforms, but we're on Podbean, Stitcher, Anchor, most all of them. Uh, so stay tuned. I'll see all of you back here next week. I'm going to have the Auction Draft Strategies Series blog dropping pretty soon, so be on the lookout for that. Bookmark the website, fantasyfootballwire.com. And again, thank you all for listening. I really... Appreciate you downloading the episode and giving it a listen. Have a great day.
Yeah, all right, this press conference is over. Go away. I'm no, it's over, Phil. Well, please, it's what? over.